Now the last thing to do is to look back at the quantum mechanical equation that we saw previously due to Schrodinger. And uh, remember, this is way too hard for us to solve in this course. It's actually quite challenging to solve in general. Can't do it analytically other than for hydrogen. But we can get good uh, results and approximations both uh, analytically and using uh, computer programs at this point. And so there's a number of things that we know from this and we're just going to jump to the results uh, a little bit more about quantum mechanics in terms of the modern view or the modern model of electronic structure and what we know uh, about atoms and the electrons in them at this point. So the summary is electrons and atoms are described by four quantum numbers. The one we've seen the most is the n quantum number, the principal quantum number. It can have values of 1, 2, 3, 4, it can keep on going. And this quantum number designates the principal energy level. So first energy level, second energy level, third energy level, or first, second, third shells, etc. The second quantum number is L. Um, it designates the sublevel or subshell and therefore the shape of the orbitals in that subshell. And L can have values 1, uh, sorry, L can have values 0, 1, 2, on up through 1 less than n. So if we are at, let's say, the fourth energy level, L could be 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, which is 1 less than 4. The third quantum number is m sub L, and it can have values between negative L and positive L by integer steps, and this designates the orientation of the orbital. So for example, if L is equal to 1, which corresponds to a P subshell, then M sub L can be negative 1, 0, or positive 1. And that's three different choices, therefore we have three orbitals within the P subshell. If L is equal to 2, which corresponds to the D subshell, then m sub l can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, and plus 2, and that's five total choices or values, uh, and therefore there are five orbitals in the d subshell. And then finally, the fourth quantum number is m sub s, uh, which designates spin of electron, and we uh, numerically list it as negative 1 half or positive 1 half, and we, uh, in our orbital uh, notation, we designate or draw it as an up arrow or a down arrow. Now each grouping of the first three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, specifies an orbital in a given atom. And orbitals are regions in space where electrons uh, can live, and so this would be an s orbital, a spherical location or region in space. These are the three different p orbitals which look kind of like dumbbells, and they have orientations in the x direction, y direction, and z direction perpendicular to each other. And then if we add in the fourth quantum number, m sub s, then the grouping of all four quantum numbers, n, l, m sub l, and m sub s, that set specifies a given electron. So you're now not just in this particular 2p orbital, but you're the electron with upspin or the electron with downspin in that orbital. Uh, this is a little bit of a representation of what an s orbital looks like. Each of these dots represents um, where an electron might be if you took a picture uh, or if you were able to take a picture of the this particular orbital and over time you take lots and lots and lots of pictures and each dot represents that's where the electron was at that instant and you notice that the electron is highly likely to be in this region in space pretty near to the uh, nucleus less likely to be a little farther out less likely further to be uh, farther away from the nucleus and pretty low probability of finding the electron uh, way out here so orbitals are really essentially probability distributions of likelihood to find uh, an electron in a given region and we often do a boundary of an orbital where it's containing uh, the the region in space where the electron would be found let's say 90 percent of the time or 95 percent of the time or something like that so that's an s orbital 
these are the three d sorry these are the three p orbitals that have sort of dumbbell shapes so the electrons likely to be on this side or on that side in this p orbital electrons likely to be in the top or the bottom on this one etc and then the d orbitals there's five of them and they're kind of weirder looking they're like double dumbbells with different orientations and then one of them is a dumbbell with a kind of donut in the middle okay so a couple questions with regard to this and then that should be sufficient background hopefully if n equals three what are the possible subshells well remember that the subshells are the s the p the d etc so if n is equal to three then remember that L can be anything from 0 on up to 1 less than 3. So L could be 0 or 1 or 2. And if L equals 0, that corresponds to an S subshell. If L equals 1, that corresponds to a P subshell. And if L equals 2, that corresponds to a D subshell. So the possible subshells when N equals 3 are 3s, 3p, and 3d. And if you think about it, you already knew that because those are the subshells that we've used for quite a while now when filling electron configurations, but this is sort of the quantum mechanical uh, theoretical basis for why there are three subshells for the third energy level. How many 2p orbitals are there? Well, if you're dealing with a p subshell, that means that L equals 1. And if L equals 1, then M sub L can equal anything between negative 1 and positive 1 by integer steps. So that would be negative 1, 0, and positive 1. And those are three distinct possibilities. Here's one of the 2p orbitals. Here's another 2p orbital. And there's the third 2p orbital. We already know that there are going to be three because we've done a bunch of electron configurations. Here are the three 2p orbitals, just sort of what they look like, and you can see they're oriented along the x, y, and z axes perpendicular to each other. Um, and that's going to be the case with p subshells in general. Which of the following orbitals can exist? Is it possible to have a 3s orbital, and why? Well, sure. If n equals 3, then l can equal 0 or 1 or 2. l equals 0 corresponds to s, so 3s is certainly possible. How about 4p? And again, you might answer this question based upon whether you've seen this before, but if we kind of work it out, if n equals 4, then L could equal 0 or 1 or 2 or 3, and 0 is an S orbital or is an S subshell, 1 is a P subshell, therefore that's fine. What if the question was can 4D exist? Well, sure, because 2 uh, for L equals 2 represents a D subshell. And how about if we asked if we could have 4F? And you'd have to say yes to that as well, because if L equals 3, which is possible for N equals 4, L equals 3 corresponds to an F subshell, and so 4F would exist as well. So we got diverted a little bit, but yes, 4P definitely can exist. How about 2D? Well, you might say that doesn't sound right. I don't think I've heard of it. And again, here's the uh, basis for why that isn't possible. If N is equal to 2, then L can only equal 0 or 1. L equals 0 corresponds to an S subshell. L equals 1 corresponds to a P subshell. L equals 2 would be required to get a D subshell, but you can't have L equals 2 with N equals 2, so nope on that one. And then, which of the following sets of quantum numbers are possible? So here we have all four quantum numbers for a given electron, and you go through it from left to right and see if it follows the rules. So could you have an electron in the fourth energy level, n equals 4? Sure. If you have the fourth energy level, can you have L equal 2? Well, it can be 0, 1, 2, or 3, so 2 works. If L equals 2, can M sub L equal negative 2? Well, if L equals 2, M sub L can equal negative 2, negative 1, 0, plus 1, or plus 2, so sure, that's fine. 
And then the last one, what are the possible values for m sub s? Well, m sub s can either be plus a half or negative a half, and negative a half is just fine. How about this one? Can n equals 3, n equal 3? Absolutely. If n equals 3, can l equal 0? Well, that's fine as well, and that would designate an s subshell. If l equals 0, can m sub l equal 1? And the answer to that is no. If L equals 0, M sub L can only have value of 0. So this one will not work because you can't have an M sub L of 1 with L of 0. And then how about this one? Can N equal 7? Well, it's a pretty high energy level, but it's possible. If N equals 7, L can be anything on up to and including 6, so 4 is fine. And um, m sub l can be anything between positive 4 and negative 4, so negative 1 is fine, and m sub s can of course be a half, so that one is fine as well.